Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to Roma Theory Italian Derby in Europe. It's been a while since we had one and uh, now we're back in it. Quarter finals of the Europa League against AC Milan. Um, I'm buzzing, I am absolutely buzzing because I think this Derby win is going to pump us with so much confidence. But at the same time... I think I think the draw could have done a bit better. It could have gone a bit better. It could have gone worse because we could have gotten the likes of Liverpool, the fact the likes of Bayer Leverkusen, who were like one win away from winning the Bundesliga. I think this was the third worst team that we could face um, because the fact that we know them so well and they know us so well, it could be a very blocked two legs of football. But European football is very different. European football is not the same as league football. And therefore, um, and therefore I'm expecting surprises. I'm expecting Roma to take their chances because we actually have a very bad record against Milan. Uh, under Mourinho, he had a very bad record against them. In fact, Milan was the team uh, that Mourinho never managed to beat in two and a half years since uh, he was the Roma manager. So now with De Rossi, Milan definitely expected different Roma. And I'm curious to see what Roma can turn up, uh, both at San Siro this Thursday, but also back at the Olympico, back home uh, next weekend as well. But how is everybody doing? Is Alexa on? I swear I can hear music in the background. Hang on a sec. Alexa, spin ye! Right, that should be it. I swear I heard music. And my sister definitely left it on. It should be off now. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, look, let's uh, match preview. This is your match preview. This is your typical match preview. It's a different match preview because, of course, it's, it's a weird one. Because we don't normally speak about Italian teams in Europe. But there are differences. So we're going to speak about Milan, we're going to speak about Milan's great form, about of players, obviously threatening players, we know them well, but uh, it's always good to re remind ourselves of who they have and how they play. Um, also, us, Derby win, how will that confidence um, bring uh, and, and kind of bring us into this tie, and then a predicted 11 as always, which I haven't leaked. Haha, -ha, there you go, you hoped I leaked it once again, well I haven't leaked it today. Uh, have some of that uh, by rocking the rocking the rocking the heritage kit. This is absolutely amazing. I had a photo shoot this morning. This is unreal, un un unreal kit. Best kit I have in my wardrobe, without a doubt. Full stop. Um, but right, I am gonna set a like target as always. I am gonna go with I'm gonna go with 100 likes. I like the 100 likes. I like the 100 likes. And I think you like the 100 likes as well. So um, let's get let's get into this. Milan. In fact, no draw. I want to flash back to the draw. Um, the teams that were in the draw, I think there wasn't one team where we could have actually called an easy game. I think every single team which is in this Europa League is more of a Champions League team than a Europa League team. I think any team that we would have faced in the in the quarterfinals of the Europa League, it would have been um, it would have been a tough it would have been a tough challenge. You know, you've got the Liverpools, you've got the Leverkusens, you've got the Milans and the Atalantas. Maybe the only easiest game I would probably say Olympic Marseille. Uh, however, I went to Marseille a few weeks ago and I went to their stadium and the atmosphere is big. So the atmosphere at the Velodrome. Uh, could have posed us some threats. We've got Milan. There is no need to reminisce about the draw, who we wanted. Uh, how did it go? Did it go well? We've got Milan. And I, and I feel like the philosophy of these draws is if we want to win this trophy, if we want to act like a big team, then um, then eventually we'd have to face all of these teams. So the, the, the quicker we face them and hypothetically the quicker we throw them out, the easier the walk in the woods. Um, I do understand the disappointment because I know, and I always say this when I speak about Europa League this season, but if you're a Roma fan speaking about the Europa League this season, you want revenge. You want to lift this trophy like you've never asked for anything in life. And I feel you. So having a, a tough opponent in the quarterfinals and Mike getting eliminated in the quarterfinals isn't happy seeing our past. And um, seen the fact that we were playing literally one month ago, no, one year ago, two years, no, one and a half, one, one year and a half, one month, 
for goal in Budapest. It's, it's disappointing how that game went. But yeah, Milan. Milan, I think, are, um, are in great form. I think the results show this. I think Milan are on great form. I think Milan at home are a very, very, very extremely complicated team to beat. And I would also say that Milan at home is a very tough team to get anything from. There are games and there are teams which I actually think it's possible to get draws from. But Milan away is just one of those games that we never bloody win. It's just one of those games that every time I get my hope up, oh, let's try and get a result at San Siro, let's break the temple of Italian football, let's send that red and black devil back home. And I always hype myself up, and then we never win. Look, it's way more likely for Roma to win against Inter in Milan than it is against, against Milan themselves. Mourinho had a very bad record against them. Hopefully, De Rossi changes the pattern um, that we have developed against them because we do not have a positive pattern against Milan. Um, but yeah, they're on a really good form. And the problem here is very simple. I think this tie would have been a different tie if Leao and Teo Hernandez were not on good form. Because I... I, I believe that 70% of that Milan quality comes from their left side. 70% of what Milan create, the goals Milan score, the chances that Milan create, all come from their left flank. And therefore, as Roma fans, we would have hoped Leao and Terranandes not to be on good form. But unfortunately, I would probably say that this is the best form Leao has hit since the start of the season which is not good because our fullbacks are not good at defending and the only way you stop Leao and Leao's speed is, um, is if you block him and our defenders can't do that. Our defenders always suffer Leao. I remember Chilik one year ago back at home marked Leao really well but that's because Leao wasn't fit. If Leao is fit, this guy is, th th this guy is unstoppable. His speed is unstoppable. Which is what brings me on to say number one tactic on Thursday needs to be balance and not leaving too many gaps in defense. Because the second we counter-attack and they get the ball from us and they and they, they, they start running with Pulisic, Leao, Giroud, Teo Hernandez, we're done. Milan are the best counter-attacking side in, in Italy because of their players, because of the speed of their players, because of the quality of their players. Look, Leao is a hit or miss because Leao plays one month of in unreal football every eight months which is not what you want from a player. And I do think that Leao is a bit overrated. I, I, I ain't gonna lie. You know, Leao is a bit overrated because for me, Leao has got immense quality, but Leao uses that quality every, one month every eight months, which is not good from a player which Milan are asking 150 million from. So I do think that Leao and Milan fans who compare Leao to Vini Jr, to Kylian Mbappe, they're delusional because Leao isn't that level. But whenever Leao hits the game and hits his form, he is hands down easily one of the best players in the league. The other rest of the games where he doesn't play well, he's like a ghost. He, he barely touches the ball, he barely shows that empathy wanting to play. So it really does depend on how Teo Hernandez and Leao turn up to this game. But the problem here is, is that Recently, Pulisic is also in great form. Giroud got back scoring and he's announced that he's leaving at the end of the season. So he wants that heroic end of the season. And Loftus-Cheek is also on really good form. I've got him in my fantasy and he's scoring goals for fun and saving my points every bloody weekend. Which is amazing from a fan, from a fantasy football point of view. It's not as good as a Roman point of view facing Milan in two days. Um, the problem with Milan, the overall problem with Milan is very simple. It's the fact that they have nothing to play for in the league anymore. They're not going to win the league and they're not going to get third. They're basically mathematically already in the Champions League. They can't win the league. Juventus are too crap from them. So Milan are going to get second. And in one month and a half of football action in the league, Milan have nothing to play for. They literally are going to give it their all best and they're going to devote 150% of their energies in winning this Europa League, which is not good because it, it's kind of, they see this tournament as a save the season kind of tournament. 
By the way, a very curious thing, um, if there are any Milan fans watching this, maybe it's because I support Roma and I haven't been qualifying for the Champions League for the past, what, six years? But can somebody who supports Milan watching this video please tell me why Pioli is getting so much hate and why everybody is demanding Pioli's sack? This is one of those mysteries of football which I will never understand. Why are Milan fans turning against a manager who literally won them a league out of nowhere two years ago, got them in the Champions League last season, got them second this season and therefore in the Champions League again? Maybe it's because they got knocked out of the Champions League and they expected more, but Milan's group stage was not an easy group stage. So I don't get all this Pioli hate. I don't think Pioli is, a, an, is an outstanding manager, but I also think Pioli is a manager which has grinded results. He's brought you in every single Champions League. He's won your league title out of nowhere. I will never understand that hate Pioli gets. But again, maybe it's because I support Roma and my standards have heavily dropped in these past couple of years because I've, I've not been qualifying for the Champions League for the past six years. Um, which, again, shows you the different perspectives of, um, of football. Speaking about us, because ultimately this is the Roma fan channel and... Um, Oh yeah, one last thing about Milan, their defence is not good, they concede a lot and we need to attack. Our objective on Thursday is not to lose. If we have to lose, similar to what I was saying against Brighton, similar to what I was saying against uh, Feyenoord, if we have to lose, seeing the fact that the first leg is away, if we have to really lose, we need to lose 2-1. We can't lose with, a, with more than a two goal difference because then, it's, it, then it comes hard. And I always say the same phrase, but miracles are called miracles because they happen once every death of a Pope. Um, yes, we beat Barcelona 3-0, but that was golden years. And I'm not sure that's gonna happen every single season. I agree, we are gonna win against Milan at home because Olympico and all of that transforms in these European nights. I agree that the chances of us beating Milan at home are very high. But the key to us qualifying for the next round is really not, not, not getting a catastrophe in Milan. I don't think we're going to win. And I don't think we're going to win. I don't want to say that, um, that they are going to, that we're not, I don't want to say that we are going to win because I don't want to hype myself too, too much. It's very easy to hype ourselves up because we want a derby. Milan is 10 levels from Lazio. Milan is way better than Lazio. And Milan also have got more quality in that team than Lazio. And we're playing away from home in a stadium that we have a terrible record in. So I don't think we're going to win. And in fact, I do think we're going to lose. But I'm going to be confident and say that we're going to lose with a narrow, a narrow score. I think we're, we're going to score, but I think we're going to lose 2-1. And then bring it back to the Olympico. I'll be there. Stadium vlog will be there. 70,000 of us is going to be there. If you're watching at home, we're going to sing, sing, scarves, flags, choreos, pyros, tifos, and that's where we ultimately decide our faith. But I do think we are going to lose on Thursday. I hope to be wrong, as always. Um, a, a draw, a draw on Thursday would be golden. A draw on Thursday, let me sign, let me sign on this screen, because I'd love a draw on Thursday. I think it's a very good result. Uh, to then bring back in uh, in a trap which no team wants to play in. But again, no need to think about the second leg. We have to think about this leg. It's very easy to hype for the players to hype themselves up after the Dory win, I agree. Uh, feet on the ground, head on the floor, because we haven't achieved nothing. And they Rossi cares about this Europa League. The players care about this Europa League. And ultimately the fans care about something that was stolen from us. So uh, we care about this. And uh, best starting eleven is going to start this game, and um, and we hope for the best. But yeah, we definitely will have a confidence boost. It's just about maintaining that confidence boost and balancing the game really well. Which leads me on to the predicted eleven, which is this. As then again, standard. I'll give you 30 seconds to look at that and prepare some questions. In the meantime, I am going to read some comments. Mancini find 5K is criminal. These guys don't understand Dorby's. I gave my opinion on that in the match reaction and I don't want to repeat the level of hate that Roma keeps on getting because it's useless, it's pointless.
this organization, this country, or absolute shithouses. And these incompetent groups of people will never leave their job and will continue to rule under corruption. So uh, it's useless for us to speak about this because the, the more we speak about this, the more, um, the more, the more hell turns against us. Um, uh, in case nobody gets that joke, uh, a Cherbi called one Jesus an N-word twice and nothing happened. Exactly. Shit officials in Italy says Abdu Karim. Welcome, Baldanzi boy. I loved Roma, huge fan of them, but I'm not sure if we're ready for this. It's the same fate for us when we played against Inter. No, I think Milan are weaker than Inter. Let's not, let's not, let's not compare Milan to Inter because Inter this season are unplayable. But yeah, Milan are definitely the second best team in Italy and there is no need to hide that. Teo and Leao are a deadly duo. They are almost unstoppable. Zbiloy needs to make stunning saves. Hopefully Lukaku receives better service as the supply line wasn't great in previous two games. Yeah, this is, you know, this is the game that I see Lukaku getting pocketed in. But again, Milan conceded a lot in defence, so it might be his game. Um, right. Yeah, there we go. I knew it. First question is, where is Mancini? Mancini did not train with the team today. He had that problem in the derby. He insisted on playing over that problem, which then led to him scoring a goal and all of that. Um, and Mancini didn't train today. Now, the last final training session before deciding the starting eleven is going to be tomorrow morning. And I know Mancini, he's got, he's, he's got the best aggression and determination in this team. And I can see Mancini playing over that injury for this game as well. But uh, yeah, I'm basing this lineup on the news that uh, have been coming out. And Mancini has a muscle problem, uh, which is the same problem as the Derby. And he sat today's training out. Which is why I think uh, he's going to rest this one out. Llorente, Smalling are going to start. Perché c'è Spina e non Angelino? Secondo me perché si devono un po' alternare. Uh, Angelino ha giocato una grande partita contro la Lazio, però bisogna anche provare Spina sola per me. Uh, la Roma deve resistere a Milano, in casa li distruggiamo, uh, dice Alessio. I think the hate is from the Milan fans uh, seeding over Inter's success. They hate that they're 14 points below Inter. And I agree, uh, you know, but, um, but Inter are better. You know, it's like asking, yeah, Inter are better. There's nothing we can do. So, and DK isn't starting because he's suspended. Yes. I don't think we should just pick to focus on Serie or UEL because that's not the embodiment that reflects Roma. We need to try and play every game as... Oh, yeah, absolutely, mate. Uh, I, I fully agree on that. Um, I think Mancini would play over the injury because he's a warrior for the... Oh, absolutely. I'm just basing this line up on what Sky Sports have said and the news that uh, come out. Right, Zvilar and goal, uh, Spina and Cilic, um, Angelino could start, yes, but I also think the more we start Angelino, who, by the way, deserves to start, and the more we put Spina on the bench, the quicker Spina loses its form, and Andre De Rossi, his form has been pretty good. Um, and the other thing, which I, which, again, it's kind of contradicting, because Angelino has been unreal when it comes to aerial duels, but Mil Milan have got uh, very tall players, from Tomori to Giroud to uh, Loftus-Cheek to Leao himself. Th these are all tall players. So, um, so yeah, you know, Spina is taller than Angelino. Angelino has been unreal on aerial duels. My question is, can he, be, can he be that good, even though he's that short, when he's got players who are double the size of him around him? So, I'm going to put Spina for this one, and I'm going to put Smalling back, and Chilik, way more than Korsdop. Uh, the midfield is the standard midfield. Paredes, Pellegrini, Cristante. I don't think DDR is going to change this. Bove. People are saying Bove in the chat. I don't know. I think this is a game which De Rossi cares about a lot. Um, so yeah, I don't think I, think... I think I think I think this is the standard lineup for De Rossi. We've started this lineup in the biggest games with him. From Brighton to Lazio to Inter. So I don't think we're going to change the system too much. Oshrawi, Lukaku, Dybala. Dybala and Lukaku need a good performance because, yes, they tend to not perform well in these games, but Milan concede a lot. Milan concede a lot of gaps. Milan's defence is not good. So Dybala, I want shots from outside the box. Lukaku, I want movements, sense of positioning. Because, uh, yeah, Milan have not, have, have not been great defensively this season. Um, yeah, right. That's my predicted eleven. 
And I, I, I don't think it's going to be anything else. Baldanzi, I don't think it's going to start this game. Um, who else did I miss? Bobby, as we said, I don't think he's going to start this game. Mancini is the biggest question mark. Korsdop, Korsdop marking Leao and Teo Hernandez is really like uh, Chucky, Annabelle and Pennywise nightmare for a six years old. We don't want that. Korsdop marking Leao, who's on good form, and Teo Hernandez is literally like asking uh, asking Donald Trump to save the world from climate change. Um, I, I, that, that was a weird one. I, I hate bringing politics into football and I shouldn't have done that. Uh, but yeah, you get the point. Um, a few months ago, we had literally no centre-backs and now we have so many, says uh, Trenix. Spina defends better than Angelino. Uh, we need to focus on keeping a clean sheet, so maybe Spina should start. Uh, Spina's like prime Cafu in this European night. The main reason why we hold up the ball for some time. I know Tammy isn't fit, but if he's able to start, I would start him with a double pivot instead of an El Shrawi. I agree, but Tammy isn't... St we can't rush Tammy. Look, Tammy's going to get 20 minutes in this game. He got 10 minutes against Lazio. He's probably going to get 20 minutes in this one. I agree. But, you know, it's such a big risk and hazard starting a player who's been out for eight months back starting in such an important game. He needs to have a gradual comeback. And I th he's going to get minutes in this game, and I'm, I'm extremely happy for that. But starting him from the first minute in such a big game, where he's not been, he's not been playing much at all in these last months, is a big risk. You know, you really, re you re you really risk burning him down. Um, because, yeah, he needs to get that feeling of touching the ball back. And in such an important European night, it's a risk... Um, right, and then the last thing which I want to say is this, um, is this, um, going forward in the Europa League is a risk. And, um, and yet, I have no doubt that this team needs to, I agree, there was somebody who said this before, and I perfectly agree. You can't pick between going all in in the league and going all in in the Europa League. Because if that was our mentality, then um, if that is our mentality, then we would never celebrate qualifying for European tournaments. So that's not what we should do. We need to play the remaining of this season step by step. Detail by detail, moment by moment. Don't think about the game which is coming up next weekend. Think about this game. Think about every single game step by step by step. Because if we start panicking about, oh, I've got Milan, then I've got Atalanta, I've got Udinese away, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. We're gonna, we're, we're, it's going to be a catastrophe. Step by step. That's the only way we go through this tough period of games. We cannot snob Europa League because that's what Lazio does. That's, that, that's not what we do. We are called Roma and we represent the first team of the city for this, for mentality. We reached the Conference League final and won it. We reached the Europa League final and was robbed. We beat Barcelona a few years back. We were, we, we were supposed to be playing a Champions League final until Liverpool and Trent Alexander-Arnold robbed that semi-final. We have implanted a, mental, a European mentality in our DNA. And to just snub the Europa League to go, oh, well, no, I want to focus on the league because it's going to cost too much energies, is not what we should do. Because there's a, there's, a, there's a flame in every single body, in every single heart of every single fucking Roma fan which wants to lift this trophy. It's impossible, I know, because you've got Liverpool, you've got Leverkusen, but impossible also turns into I'm possible and by doing that you have to believe in every single thing you do Milan or favorites in this tie I agree does that mean we snub it does that mean we don't play with the same intensity no double gantolino non te preoccupa um it you know it's an honor it, it doesn't it make us proud that we're constantly in these recent times in finals, semi-finals, quarter-finals of these, of these major tournaments. This is what makes us proud. So snobbing this, snobbing this value away is like, 
It's like receiving, it's like you're a girl, you receive a ring from your boyfriend and you don't like it. You know how much money that guy spent on that ring? You know, if you, if you snub that ring, you're a monster. Because that guy spent his monthly wage to buy you that ring, to make you happy, to make you live that moment. And you snub it like that? No, that's wrong. That's immoral. You're a monster if you do that. We call it, you know, you know, the amount of energies that we put into reaching Euro a Europa League final last year and in constantly reaching these positions, penalty shoot against Feyenoord, beating Brighton 4-0, all of that can't get dissolved in a matter of seconds because that is what ultimately makes us proud. Who was, it, who was there in Budapest? Who was there in Tirana? Who watched the final, the Budapest final from home or the Tirana final from home? Who watched us watching that trophy live? Who was there in the Puskas Arena crying? That moment made us proud. That experience, traveling there with friends, actually saying to your friends and family, I'm playing a fucking European final. So snubbing this tournament and not believing in winning this tournament is wrong and it's immoral and we should, we should never do this. With that being said, do I think that continuing in, um, in, Euro in Europa League means having more injuries, having more lacks of energies, and therefore losing more games in the league? Absolutely. But that is where we need to be good at balancing ourselves. That's where we need to be good at managing ourselves and, and playing every game because that's what big teams do. So I do agree. It's a risk. Continuing, uh, you know, quarterfinals, starting the starting 11 in the quarterfinals uh, on Thursday and then again next Thursday. And then let's say we qualify, we fly to London and start our first um, starting 11 or we fly to Germany and then again and again and again. And then the mentality of qualify that is going to exhaust us. But our objective this season is to be playing in the Champions League. It's what ultimately the Frankens want from De Rossi. And it's what us fans want from the team. So whatever we can do to qualify in the Champions League, we need to do game by game. Milan on Thursday, we play. Whatever the result will be, on Sunday we're back going. Away from home, Udinese. Whatever that result is going to be, we need to stop dragging that result too forward. Whatever the results are, we leave them there and we move forward. Of course we need results though, because that's ultimately what you need if you want to qualify for the Champions League. Um, which is it? That that that's it. Again, again, it's not it's not a surprise that it's going to cost us energies, but we shouldn't and we can't and we will not snub this tournament. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's it. I'm done. I'm done with the speech. Let's read some comments. Um, how are we feeling, by the way, for this tie? I'm gonna give you my betting tip and prediction in a bit. In, in, uh, as soon as I finish reading all the comments. By the way, do hit the like. 100 likes would be absolutely amazing. If you're ready for this tie. If, 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 if this tie feists you up. Prepares you for a European derby. European war. At San Siro, The temple of Italian football. Hit the like. DDR's press conference reaction tomorrow. And watch along on Thursday. Um, if Chilik plays like he did versus Brighton at home, he will pocket Leao. I think that Korsop doesn't care in many of the games. Do you watch the two UCL quarterfinals matches? You should do watch along. Yeah, mate, the problem with the watch along is very simple. The problem with the watch along is that I need to sit on this chair for two hours speaking to you guys when I can't eat. If I have to take a shit, I can't take a shit and all of that. So... I do watch a lot, being a Roma fan channel, I tend to just stick with Roma content. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna watch them, of course, R relax on the sofa. By the way, did we all hear about this ISIS uh, threat for the Champions League games tonight? That is, that it's, it's scary. If you're a fan going to those games, it is scary and uh, it, it's crazy, society nowadays. But yeah, hopefully nothing, uh, hopefully, let's pray that nothing happens tonight in the, in the Champions League games. Puoi cantare un inno italiano, è davvero incredibile che un inglese sappia così bene il romano. Non sono inglese, fra, sono italiano, vado solo a scuola inglese. Vivo a Roma, sono italiano, però se vuoi te lo canto comunque. Roma, Roma bella, to dipinta io. 
Uh, Stefano Schau is better than all our wingers and has more European experience than all of them, considering he played against Chelsea, scoring two goals in many. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I do agree. But El Shrawi against Chelsea was prime El Shrawi. Mancini is a warrior and will start this game. I don't like this attacking formation with both Mancini and Ndika out, says Chris. De Rossi could also start with a back three, but I think back three limits the chances we create. And in such a game, you do need to try and score a goal. Um, how things, mate, from a Celtic fan, take uh, care, mate. Yeah, uh, shout out to you, mate. Uh, love the support. Mancini is one of the best centre-backs in Serie A, hand down. He is irreplaceable if we want to claim Europa title this season. Just take a shit whenever you want. Nah. <laughs> Who do you think will win the UCL this year? At the start of the season, I would have said Inter. Now I'd probably go with Man City. I mean, you can't predict against them. I think it's... I think whoever wins the tie, Real Madrid, Man City, win, wins, the, wins the Champions League. I think the final is either going to be Man City PSG or Real PSG. And uh, I do think that either Man City or Real beat PSG. PSG are a great team because they've got Mbappe who can carry that team hands down single-handedly. But then you look at the players Man City and Real Madrid get, have and, uh, and it's just quality. It's better and, and I think they'll win it. Do you think we'll win against Bologna? Step by step, mate. Bologna comes next week. I want to focus on this game. It also depends on how we play these games. Let's focus on this game first. Uh, by the way, I've got a question for Chuan Hoa Hoang. Are you from Vietnam, mate? Because I've this is this is weird. But I'm watching this um, this Sky series, which is basically you probably have the equivalent of this in in your countries as well. It's basically called Pekino Express, and uh, it's this, um, you've got like eight couples, eight, it could be a couple of friends, a couple of dad and uh, daughter, dad and son, boyfriend and girlfriend, and basically uh, there are eight different couples, duos, and these duos basically need, need to race, uh, they've got no money, uh, they don't speak foreign languages, and, uh, and they basically need to, um, it's like a, 20 episode series and these these no it's like a 10 episode series and these couples need to uh need to like race against each other um and whoever and at the end of every episode a, a, a couple gets eliminated and it's interesting because this season's Pekino Express is uh, I'm absolutely loving it it's an incredible series if you're Italian watch it because it deserves so uh, it's in, in, in Vietnam, the route that these competitors need to take is Vietnam, Laos, and then Sri Lanka. Which is interesting because you have no money, you gotta like hijack and uh, you gotta ask for a rise, you gotta sleep but you don't speak their languages. Uh, and it's also interesting because one of the duo is Carissa, the journalist, um, these celebrities, the journalist uh, Fabio Carissa. Uh, which I mentioned yesterday in, in my stream. He's there with, with his daughter and they're a duo. And then you have, yeah, you have a few celebrities, but it is fun. It's like, um, yeah, it, it's a fun one. Right, I'm rambling again. So, uh, yeah, you are from Vietnam. Shout out to you, mate. Vietnam is a great country. The Atalanta game will be tough. Yes. I agree. Right. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this longer stream. But, uh, yeah, it's that stage of the season where we just need to speak because we're coming towards the end. It's the final rush and every detail counts. I'm going to catch you tomorrow for Diddlesy's press conference reaction when the team will fly to Milan. Don't forget to hit the like. 100 likes would be absolutely amazing. Subscribe. And uh, yeah. Talk to you soon. See you out.